It seemed like it would be a quiet life for Steve Rogers being born July 4th, 1917 to Irish immigrant Sarah and Joseph Rogers. It was a quiet childhood for Steve growing up on Manhattan's Lower East Side with a modest family that worked hard yet they still got by. Steve grew up to be a very tall yet very scrawny fine art student. Upon the coming doom of Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich, Steve decided to enlist in the U.S. Army. Unfortunately, he was marked 4F and turned away because of his poor constitution. Utterly defeated, he quickly accepted an offer from an officer looking for test subjects on a top secret military defense project. Signing on to Operation Rebirth, Steve underwent a rigorous selection process and was chosen to be the first human test test subject for a super soldier serum by scientist Abraham Erskine. Throughout a full night, Rogers was given injections, both orally and otherwise, of this super soldier serum and was exposed to controlled bursts of vita rays to stabilize the serum. The process successfully transformed Steve from his frail self to the maximum form of human efficiency by altering his musculature and reflexes to a superhuman degree. Erskine called him a nearly perfect human being. But then again, it was his test project, maybe he was just tuning his own horn. The U.S. government is so pleased with the outcome of their perfect human being, they establish her success not only as a superhero, but also as a tremendous propaganda symbol to counteract the oncoming Nazi plague. It isn't long before Captain America is sent overseas to seek out and destroy Germany's head of terrorist operations, the Red Skull. But, before leaving the U.S. shores, President Franklin D. Roosevelt awards him a shield made of an indestructible alloy made of steel and vibranium. Yes, vibranium exists, folks. Throughout World War II, Rogers fought side by side with his ally and mascot, Bucky Barnes, a 16-year-old boy who knew of Rogers' secret identity. In 1945, while attempting to prevent Baron Zemo from destroying an experimental plane, Captain America and Bucky are trapped on board. As Bucky attempts to disarm the bomb, it explodes, killing him instantly and sending Cap hurling into the North Atlantic. His body is never found. Never, being 1964, when the superhero team The Avengers discover a soldier frozen in a block of ice. This soldier turned out to be Steve Rogers carrying his indestructible vibranium shield. Rogers then ran with the Avengers off and on over the next few years and eventually touched base with his old war buddy Nick Fury. Ran together with him for a while. During Vietnam and leading into the Watergate scandal, Rogers is unhappy with the nation's leadership and temporarily abandons his Captain America duties. It doesn't take him long to realize what an important symbol he was to the American public and he once again dons a uniform to fight crime for the United States. In 2006, after an incident involving superheroes gone awry, 600 people are killed while filming a TV reality show involving superheroes and their secret identities. George W. Bush, after watching the Pixar film The Incredibles, deems it should be necessary for all superheroes to register their secret identities in order to preserve the safety of the American people. Cap is caught up in the midst of this and stands strong in his belief that this law is wrong. He forms an underground superhero team known as the Secret Avengers. No one ever said he was that creative. Cap pulls no punches in his fight against the government, but eventually throws in a towel when he realizes how many civilians are being caught in the crossfire on this registration act. He tosses down his mask, reveals his secret identity as Steve Rogers, and surrenders to the government. Following his surrender, Steve Rogers is indicted on several criminal charges, and while entering a federal courthouse, he is shot through the back by a sniper. In the chaos that ensues, he is wounded an additional three times by gunshots to the stomach and chest. He is taken to a local hospital where he is pronounced dead on arrival. Captain America died of thinning plot lines and writer's block in March of 2007. This Week in Death.